Last week we started a series regarding the birth of Jesus and, and we had talked about uh, that particular part preparation or basically the setting of Jesus Christ coming uh, into this world to save a wretch like us. Amen. Uh, you know, we looked at the location and, and all of the preparation that happened for the location of for him to be born in Bethlehem and, and to all the things that surrounded that to, in order for that to, to happen. We looked at Micah, we looked at Luke, and we saw all of these things. We looked at the timing of the, of the birth and we knew that the timing was right on time. Uh, and then we said that the timing of the birth in the very end, uh, the timing of his birth inside each and every one of us, uh, which was uh, most important uh, that he is born inside of us. Uh, how he rose inside of each and every one of us. And that just reminds us, amen, just how good God is because he hadn't forgotten about us. Uh, even while we were in our sins, amen, we saw that Christ died for us. Uh, so he thought about us even while we were in our sins. Uh, we use the base scripture out of Matthew chapter number three, amen, verse number three. But I went on and read verses one through three. I'm going to read that again on, on today. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. May the Lord have a blessing reading here and doers of his holy word. Amen. So today we're going to be taking a look at uh, the birth of Jesus as a, this title. But subtopic in part number two is preparation, the name. Last time we looked at preparation, the setting. But this time preparation, the name. And, and we all know that the name is important when it comes, amen, to babies. And not only is the name important to babies, but names are important even as we as we get older, because when we get older, amen, we need to call you by your name, amen. If somebody say, hey, you're going to say that hey is for, uh-huh, absolutely, you know, and, and uh, you know, all these type of things. But, but what a person wants to be done is to be called by their name. They don't want to be called out of their name. They want to be called by their name. Amen. So even uh, before a baby is born, amen, the expecting parents, they, they float around different names to, uh, names to name the baby. Uh, they say, let's name him this or let's name him that and, and he's going to be junior or yeah, yeah, like uh, y'all remember when, when John the Baptist was born, don't you? And, and they wanted to name him his father's name, but, 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 but dad said, no, no, no. You know, uh, you know, they said, no, no, no. His name is not going to be uh, you know, his name. His name is going to be John. But that's not how normally we do it. Uh, so, you know, they name them the third or name them the fourth and, or, 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 or name Susie or, or Brenda or, or somebody, uh, some other name. Uh, and a brand uh, new name they would come up with sometimes. Sometimes we never heard of it before, but come up with it. Uh, so it seems that the name is an important part of life. Is that right? Name. name is an important part of life. And it is most important, amen, in the naming of Jesus Christ. 700 years before the birth of Christ, Isaiah prophetically prepared Israel for the birth of the Messiah as the Son of God. Amen. He, Jesus, was the Father's greatest gift to the world. Why? Because he came to save us. We're going to use a couple of scriptures on today or several scriptures on today. And let's first of all look in the book of Isaiah. Uh, chapter number, uh, chapter number, we'll go first of all to chapter number seven. Chapter number seven and we'll be looking at verse number, verse number 14. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter number 7, verse number 14, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, 
and shall call his name, look at this right here, y'all, call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. You see, Israel at this time, and, and during a lot of times during the Old Testament, they were going in and out of a, a, so, they had so many problems within Israel, as we have in today in our country today and in our families today. We, they were having so many problems, but more so, Israel's problem was not obeying God. Uh, they were in captivity, come out of captivity, stayed in captivity. Everything was about captivity. And, and every time they get in trouble, they, they call on the name of God. They call on God. Israel was God's, amen, chosen people. Israel was God's, amen, people. But as they got in trouble, God would bail them out. He would bail them out. We know how it is, right? Yeah. You know, we get in trouble and our the first thing we do, we get on the phone and call mom. You know, Mom, I'm in trouble. Mom say, what do I do to get you out of trouble? And we go ahead and get, get him out of trouble. So what happens is that is it important because of the fact that we see that God man, did not give up on Israel like we should not give up on our children. And that our children should not give up on us. What God has done, he bailed them out again. But now it comes where we got to have some hope. Well, here, Israel had some hope. Why? Because God sent prophets out. He spoke to the prophets. After the prophets listened to, to what God had to say, they, they had an ear to hear the Spirit. When God spoke to the prophet, the prophet would come and, and tell a man, God's people. You hear in Isaiah chapter number 7, verse number 14, a man that says right here, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. Unheard of. But he says a virgin, or more specifically, the virgin, shall conceive. And he used all these different tenses saying that is carrying or, or is at the present time, amen, uh, uh, have this child. Shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Amen. After Israel hears this, no doubt a hope should rise up inside each and every one of them because of the fact that the name itself is, amen, the name itself, Emmanuel, is God with us. Amen. For them to know that God has not left them, God has not forsaken them. Just like we know that God, according to the book of Hebrews, God will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. Amen. And then we go on down to Isaiah, go on over to chapter number 9 of Isaiah, verse number 6. And here we see as, as the prophet continues to, continues to minister to God's people, continues to say what thus saith the Lord. Here Isaiah, amen, lets them know that names are important. Amen. We're talking about preparation and last time we talked about the setting, now where Jesus was going to be born. But now we're talking about the name. Here in chapter number 9, verse number 6, it says, For unto us a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. Speaking prophetically, it's already has happened. Just as we, whenever we pray, we pray as if it's already done. Why? Because it is already done. Amen. The Bible lets us know, amen. He says, for unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. And the government, he says, shall be upon his shoulder. Mm -hmm. Now, during this time, amen, Israel, no doubt, whenever anybody, amen, suppresses a people, they're always going to rise up and go against that group of people. I mean, who wants to stay down? Who wants to continue to be suppressed? Who wants to, amen, to be, to, to be uh, smothered by someone else? But when they have this hope, First of all, Emmanuel, God with us. And then they, they need to turn around and let them know a child is born. A son is given. A government, the government shall be upon his shoulder. No longer, amen, shall anyone else reign over, amen, God's people. Well, certainly we know at that particular time, you know, uh, yes, God is uh, he's, he's supposed to be the one, uh, their God, and, and they, they, they should worship no other. But we know the issues, amen, of life that, that took Israel from one place to, to
to another spiritually. Here he says that not only is that child born and, and not only is that son given, but the government itself shall be upon his shoulder. I have all of us know that the government, amen, amen, is upon the shoulder of Jesus. Amen. He is fully in charge. He reigns supreme. Yes, I know it's not the millennial, but it's right now. Amen. God is in charge. Regardless of what we think about our government today, the government is on the shoulders of Jesus. The Bible lets us know we got to pray for our, amen, government leaders. Amen. Amen. As we pray for our government leaders, first of all, we pray, amen, for their soul, that God would save them if they're not already saved. And if they're already saved, that they would, amen, enforce, amen, and they would produce things and laws that's good for God's people. Amen. For we must pray for our government. But yes, the government is up on his shoulders. But also, he says this right here. He says, and his name shall be, look at this, called Wonderful. It talked about this wonderful being more so in a sense of miracle. Wonderful. Miracle. Then it's a counselor. A miraculous counselor. The one who would guide us straight. The one who would guide us right. The one, amen, who would give us counsel. Wonderful, miraculous counselor. But the only way in which we will be able to have a miraculous counselor is that we would, amen, accept the wise counsel. The counsel is laid out throughout the Bible. No, not just in Proverbs, but throughout the Word of God. For us to hear, to heed what God's Word says. Mm -hmm. But he says, not only government on his shoulders, not only, amen, is he wonderful counselor, but also the mighty God, the ultimate God. There is none other, amen, before him, none other over him. There is no God like unto him. The mighty God. Not only does he have his government on his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the mighty God. But look at this the everlasting Father. Everlasting Father literally means Father of Eternity. Father of eternity. He is the source of eternal. He alone is the source of eternal life. Jesus the Christ. So in preparation, we talk about the birth of Jesus. In preparation of the setting and, and making sure that everything is, is right on time and everything is where it's supposed to be to when he is born. But when he is born, his name was already prepared. His name was already prepared. Those who later to had a child, you are excited about that child and, and ready to give that child a name before the child was born. You search high and low. You went to Walmart and got the baby name book. Well, if Walmart was here back then, I don't know. But you went to the store and got a baby book. You listen to other people. You listen to other people's names. You say, I like that name. That's a pretty name. I like that name, and, but it's kind of hard to spell. And you say, but the, the other names. You say, what can we, what can we get? In? And we search, amen, and look at what what is that? You know how you write the name down and you know how you ladies write your write the name down and there's some boy you like you end up writing your last name next to yours. <laughs> you see how it look or how it sound. And and is it meh. But yeah, you search these things out and because you're looking there, looking for that name that's just right for you, for that child. And then finally you come up with one. 
that is right for you. And you keep it. Regardless of what other names that come out, what other names you hear, you hold on to that one name. And you hold on to the spell. Regardless of what anyone else says about the spell, you hold on to that spell. Because that's what you say God gave you. Here, the name of Jesus is so important. It started in the New, in the Old Testament, the preparation of it. Emmanuel, God is with us. Amen. Now, amen, he, he began to, to share, amen, the type or the, what the name really, what, what the representation of the, of the name is, amen. Government on his shoulder, amen. Wonderful counselor, amen. Amen. Now, mighty God. The everlasting Father. And then last of all, he says right here, the Prince of Peace. Shalom. It indicates that the mighty God will be a benevolent ruler bringing eternal peace on earth through the establishment of his kingdom. So God with us. God brings peace. We have, uh, we sometimes come up with these different sayings, and, and, I, and I used to have, and I've said before, the life display, they have bumper stickers and stuff. One of them says, uh, No God, K N O W, no God, and then K N O W, peace. No God, no peace. That means you have a familiarity, you have a relationship with God, and you have a relationship, amen, with peace. And then, and then there's one that after that it says just the opposite. N O, no God, you know, no peace. No God, no peace. I took part in the conflict back in 1990, Gulf War, uh, overseas, and and you know, they were this is during Saddam Hussein thing. He was shooting scuds and everything over towards Saudi Arabia, and Kuwait and stuff. And, and there were panic. Everybody putting on their mop gear, just that gear for gas, you know, like that. And everybody excited. Everybody excited about it, you know. Everybody anxiety and stuff. But you know, once they get over and in, you realize that, you know, whether I remain or I go, gotta know that you belong to God. So with me, a peace came. Because I was saved. I was real saved back then. Man, hold up. Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. Do, 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 do. I'm saved. I'm saved. And that means that, look, you know who you are and who you are. Regardless of where you are. Paul said, regardless of what state you're in, what, 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 what condition, whatever. Know who you are and who you are. Yeah. Amen. I had peace. I had someone come up to me and say, aren't you scared or what do you think of? I said, no. What? Why? I'm drinking coffee. Why? I said, because I'm saved. I've got Jesus. Amen. I asked him, do you, are you saved? Begin to witness opportunity to be able to ask him, are you saved? And then, and then the brother kind of like, he kind of walked away. I said, you know, we have study in this, in this Connex box every night at 7 o'clock. The Bible study over here. Connex box is a big old refrigerator thing, you know, like yeah. big old box car type thing. And, and, uh, and we had pamphlets set out and everything, you know, little, the little pamphlets that you pick up and go. And, and because I had peace, and, you know, people want peace. Yeah. When there's chaos going all around you, but it looks like you are at peace. Mm -hmm. They're watching you. Mm -hmm. They're watching you. And some um, weeks later, he was in a convoy going to Kuwait, and, and action happened. And, and he was one, one of the ones that got killed, and, and we'd go through his possessions in order to send it back. And I went through some of this stuff, and as I come across some stuff, I come across some things that was right there in that context box. People can come and get what they want. And I like saying, that's what we got to be is that example out there. That's what we got to be available. So people can just come and talk to us and, and be able to have something for them. 
Sometimes we don't know what impact you may have had on someone. But as long as you got peace in your life, because this world is suffering out there. This world wants some peace. This world needs some peace, and especially with, with, with what we're going through right now in our government. We've got to know that the government is on the shoulders of Jesus. We've got to know that we're not in control. Yeah. And Jesus is in control. Yeah, right. And when people see that you have some peace, they'll come and inquire. And don't you know the inquiring minds? Mm-hmm. Want to know? And they want to know, and then you can give them a piece of your mind in a good way. So, Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Let us take us to Matthew right fast, Matthew chapter number 1. Verse 21 says this right here, Matthew 1 and verse 21. Matthew 1 and 21 says, And she shall, this is the angel when he appeared to, to Joseph. You know, Mary's husband, the, the, the troll to him. But here's what it says. The 21 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name, this is, what, this is the prophecy coming to fruition, and she shall call, bring forth a son, and thou shall call his name, look at this, y'all, Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. God with us, Emmanuel, Jesus, will save his people from their sins. The purpose of Jesus, amen, to save us from our sins. Can I ask you one question? What is his name? His name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's what, that's what, that's what they, is that what they call? Is that what they call y'all? No, 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 no. What, what do you call? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Jesus. Amen. Why? Because he saved his people from their sins. Amen. His name is important. It was a lot of preparation that went in to ensure that his name was right. Amen. He's Savior, amen. He is Jehovah. Amen. He is everything, amen, to us. Amen. amen. He's also a chief cornerstone. Not only is he a chief cornerstone, he is also called the firstborn over all creation. Amen. He is called the head of the church. He is called the Holy One. He is called Judge. He is called King of Kings and what? Lord of Lords. Not only is he called that, amen, he's called the Light of the World, the Prince of Peace, Son of God, Son of Man. He is called the Word. He is called the Word of God. He is called the Word of Life. Amen. He is also, amen, Alpha and Omega. Emmanuel. He is called the Great I Am. He is called Lord of All. He is called True God. He is called the author and the perfecter of our faith. He is called bread of life. He is also the bridegroom. He is also the deliverer. He is also the good shepherd. He is also a high priest. He is also a lamb of God. He is also a mediator. He is also rock. <laughs> and also resurrection and life. He is savior. He is true vine. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Amen. After going through all of that, I'm looking at him and, and I see this Jesus. His name is important. But not only is his name important, amen, but what he did is, amen, equally as important. Amen. He was born Jesus for our salvation. Jesus, salvation. He lived as Christ, amen, for our deliverance. He showed us how. He died, amen, a sinner for our redemption. Amen. Whoever hangeth on the cross, amen, become a curse. Amen. He rose, amen, a conqueror for our justification. Amen. I'm closing, y'all. Look what Donnie McClurkin put it. He put it this way, y'all. He says, 
living, and he loved me. Uh -huh. He said, dying, he saved me. Buried, he amen, carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified me. Freed me forever. And then look what he says. One day, he's coming back, amen, and he says, glorious day. Amen. That's what we say about Jesus. That's what we say, what we say about his name because his name is so important because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue, amen, must confess. Amen. Above, amen, here, and below. Amen. They will bow and they will confess at the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Devils that have bowed down at the name of Jesus. Amen. And then we have this other one says, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I have the victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, also this right here. Amen. Not only do we have, amen, amen, a, a, a victory, but we have power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Amen. amen. When you say Jesus, amen, devils tremble. When you say the name Jesus, amen, amen, healing takes place. When you say the name of Jesus, there is deliverance. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Amen. He is the one. Amen. Jesus is the answer. Yes. Amen. He is the answer for the world today. Amen. And we, amen. When we got Jesus, not only do we have that, but we also, amen, have that Holy Ghost power. Amen. Because why? Jesus Christ, amen, came, amen, to give us life and have it, that we may have that life more abundantly. Amen. amen. And God gave his only begotten son that whosoever, doesn't matter who, but whosoever, believeth in him, amen, shall not perish. But have everlasting life. John 3 16. Amen. We gotta know that. We gotta, we gotta know Jesus, amen, in the part of our sins in order for us to make it to heaven. If we want to talk about a ticket, amen, that's the ticket. Amen. If you want to give away a ticket, just tell somebody that ticket, I will give to you, amen. Free of charge. But somebody paid the price. Amen. And that ticket will get you to heaven. Amen. And that ticket is Jesus Christ. Amen. And we want to give it to that. Anybody who want to go to heaven, amen, you ain't got no ticket, you need it. Amen. And uh, uh, Jesus Christ is the way, and he is the only way. Amen. The truth and the life. And that's Jesus Christ. Amen. The door of the church is open, let us stand.